Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about system design skills. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you as a software engineer improve your system design skills? That is a great question. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's going to be a little bit tricky to explain this one, but uh, bear with me. So, this is one of those situations where you've probably heard me say a few times now that for most intents and purposes, hardcore algorithmic computer science types of problems are not so common within uh, the everyday software development, right? And I've also said that although that is unfortunately the case, that that's not that common, especially in the lower levels, and you, you so, sort of have to put at least sometimes, I'd like to say 80-20, uh, on this versus just learning tooling and how to just build standard web applications and stuff like that. Because a lot of the uh, computer science questions might come up, it's a think still sort of 50-50 chance that's going to be part of your interviewing process. But I've also said which, uh, that the more you know, like the social theoretical uh, ways of solving problems, the broader your perspective is going to be when you deal with certain types of problems. Now system design is an instance of such a thing where, for example, if you're going to design a system of some sort, the more experience you have with different types of problems and different types of approaches to solving those sorts of problems, the better your design is going to be. So what I usually say to people is that in order for you to get really good at system architecture and design, which is unfortunately not always how a system architect becomes an architect, it's sort of, this is in essence my point on this, where if, you, if we take an analogy to like the military or like the army or something like that, right, where if you have educated yourself to become a general, you will most likely suck at that job. If you, on the other hand, started out as like a private and made it all the way up to general through combat and actually going to war and actually learning how to do all these sorts of things, right, you are going to be extremely good at this because when you are leading an army or you're like do like sort of managing all of these sorts of things, the experience and the different challenges that you have faced in different and working you know fighting in different types of environments under different circumstances in different positions with different types of you know assets and limitations and so forth that perspective is going to be invaluable to you and the same thing goes for system design in other words what i'm saying is that the more problems that you have faced the better your ability to design a good system that is, in essence, what I'm saying, and that's why I think it's so wrong, personally, that someone can become an architect without being a software developer for years and years and years, because the reality is that you're, for most intents and purposes, just, you know, well, let's just say that I've worked with a lot of solution architects and the cloud architects and, like, all these sorts of people, like, they... A junior at that in that sort of thing is only really useful to an incompetent senior uh, software developer, or someone who kind of who hasn't really gone and become a real senior, as I like to call them. So the way that I suggest that you improve these skills is to literally just build t different types of systems where different types of considerations are needed. Now this is very difficult because it's sort of like uh, it becomes an even bigger version of trying to learn design patterns because if you try to if you in this everybody does this or rather a lot of people do this you have junior level software developers who learn the basics and then they become philosophers and they go wow okay how, how am i going to take my my software skills to the next level and then they learn about design patterns and now they try to learn they go and study design patterns with the purpose of understanding them, which you, it's sort of like the cart before the horse. You, you're actually trying to f study methods of solving problems, and in my experience, that always ends the same way. It's 
ends with you trying to basically shoehorn in those solutions into every problem that you have because you haven't taken the time to understand the problem which is the thing that is important the design pattern is good to know about you need to understand it and so forth but the goal is for you to find a problem where that design pattern is a good fit and so it's better for you in my opinion to focus on finding a problem that in order to solve that problem you actually need to apply a design pattern and the same thing is down to system design so if you're designing a system try to build systems that are actually trying to do something that is you know if because everybody sort of star, starts with a standard layered architecture type of MVC applications or monoliths and so forth so try to figure out a system or like build a system where that is actually pro that's probably not the good a good way to go in some cases you're and this is what I think is going to be interesting for you as a junior I, I, you're basically bound to fail here but it's a sort of part of the journey you're going to make mistakes I did the same thing and I can tell you right now guys microservices is a really stupid idea for a single person to to build an entire like you you can build everything as a microservice uh, architecture if you want to but it's really not a good idea uh, at small scale and you're gonna figure that out by trying to design a system where that sort of thing is necessary and then later in your career you're probably gonna realize that the time when microservices is a really good idea is actually when you have a problem that you're probably never gonna face as a single individual it might make a lot of sense when you're at scale and you have a lot of uh, other things going on and you have a lot of teams and so forth but that small scale is always n almost never really the thing you go for but then you can do other things where you can design very specific systems have you ever tried for example to create your own social media platform like YouTube or something like that and I'm not talking about just hosting links now I'm talking about actually figuring out how do you store video how do you actually make recommendations through searches and so forth like take it to the next level and this is usually the sort of thing that you do once you have worked for a little while because it's going to get increasingly more complicated I mean as I said, if you want to take a real challenge go and figure out how the Google search engine works because although you might not be able to make Google's search and like a, your own copy of it that is equal to Google there is enough knowledge on the internet to design that system to do all the crawling the indexing of pages the categorization the linking and like creating like these sort of relevancy graphs and I mean you can do this for the search itself you can sort of sheet and use elastic search or something like that there's tons of ways for you to sort of put yourself in a position where you're trying to design a system that is different from the standard to do app you know web shop that sort of thing that most of us are doing and I promise you by doing that it's sort of like a painter trying out new art forms you're going to start getting really good at designing systems I promise you that so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I suggest that people improve their system design skills is to build a lot of different types of systems so an example would be rather than just learning what CQRS is maybe just actually figure out sort of what the use case for it and build systems that are do using a, a pattern where that might be a very useful pattern or event sourcing or these sorts of things like don't focus so much on the pattern don't try to learn system design just by theory because it's stupid and it's always going to be stupid practice by doing if you just learn the theory like design patterns and things like that you're never gonna get good at it it's the same thing as trying to study martial arts through a book you have to learn the basics in theory and then apply it over and over and over in different circumstances so that you sort of learn the underlying wisdom of when is this a good when is this a good idea when is another approach a better idea and so do that start building something different than the boring MVC type of uh, web shop uh, applications that you might be doing and this is where it gets really tricky guys because some of these systems are so complicated and so big that if you're gonna do it just in your private time it's gonna be very tricky for you to even in some cases you can't because the, the challenge that you're facing in order to build that sort of system is it has to be like a gigantic system and in those circumstances as I've said before guys when you get to that level the job is more important than anything else the project you, that you are working on is the thing that is going to dictate how good that you how good you get at this
because some projects are boring like all standard web shop type of projects and some projects are truly groundbreaking systems that very few people have ever designed before. Have a great day.